I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Amen. Amen. The world, the world is at war. Nations are killing each other. Our world suffers from violence. Families are destroyed because those in charge lose the fight against the flesh, against the sinful thoughts and behaviors. The root of all this violence is sin. Sin is pulling all the strings that result in the chaos, pain, and calamity in the world. And the very sin we see halfway around the world that we mourn is the same sin that percolates in us today. As the church, we are committed to getting rid of what the Bible calls the old yeast or leaven, what we call sin. That's why we're gathered tonight. Together we're entering the season of Lent to cover ourselves in ashes as a sign of confession and contrition before God. The ashes are also a sign of commitment to repentance. We can do this because we have a righteous, holy, and forgiving Father and through the blood of Jesus Christ. So tonight, we come before God with our ashes, or should I say our stories of sin, practicing the act of worship that is confession. Let us pray again. When I kept silent about my sin, my bones wasted away from crying all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as in the hot summer. I told my sin to you, and I did not hide my wrongdoing. I said, I will tell my sins to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Lord, this is why we are here today. We have things to confess. We have things to lay at your feet. And God, we thank you that we have a Lord, we have a God, we have a Savior that we can confess to, that we can lay our burdens down at. Lord, come, fill us, fill us with your Spirit, that we may repent today and confess today with a true, broken heart. We love you in Jesus' name. Please open your arms as an act of presenting yourself before God. You can open your arms and your palms out. Okay, and if you look at the screen, we'll do a call and response together. Holy and good Father, we come before you trusting that you love us. We trust that your mercy and grace are intended for us. Holy Spirit, gently unravel us. Soften our hardened hearts. Reveal to us the ways we have distanced and been distracted. We open ourselves to you tonight, placing our brokenness and shame under your healing, loving hands. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's bring our trumpets, ashes, and tears to the Lord now together. Amen. I invite you to stand. Um, and we're going to be sitting and standing throughout. And we're sitting on stools because we've got to be up here all night. So just not being lazy. We're trying to be cool. Let's enter into worship to remember the cross again. Just 
to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall the scandal of grace you died in my place so my soul is calling Have you come to the end of self? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling
be seated. Welcome again, church, to our Ash Wednesday Tuesday service. Um, I love Ash Wednesday because it's the opportunity that we have to enter into this Lenten season together through confession as a body. 
And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes confession feels a little confusing. I don't really know how to confess. And sometimes it kind of feels like sin magnifying, right? But tonight, we're going to lead you through three different movements and to share the particular language to help guide you guys through this so that we can actually magnify Christ at the end of this. Amen. So we're going to lead you through a national confession on behalf of our nation. We're going to lead you through a corporate confession on behalf of the church and then a personal confession on your own. And you'll find that in the booklet that you received on your way in. And again, this language is particular so that you can find uh, maybe a foothold in that. It's not the end all of all of our confessions, but hopefully it provides you with language to start bringing your heart before God. You know, what I love about the Lent season is there's this intimacy with God that we find, right? I think sometimes we can get stuck in that place of shame, of hiding from God. But what Lent really offers us is an invitation to really come again to the altar and to find that our God is so good and that he made the way for us to come. Amen. So through each of the movements, you're going to find a call and response prayer. And again, this language is just to help you respond with the body. And then we're going to be singing the Kyrie Eliaison. That is a a, a lyrical call and response prayer. And if you don't know it, it's okay. You'll hear the melody throughout the night, and you'll catch on. um, And it'll just be a prayer that we can join in with all the saints. So with humility and with openness with a deep reverence for the price that God has paid for us. Let us confess our sins tonight, that we may receive his mercy and his forgiveness. May we enter into this holy season of mourning, grieving our distance from our loving, holy, and righteous Father. So if you're able, would you, would you kneel with us? If you're in the front row here, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, You can kneel here at the altar if you'd like, or you can go to the rows behind you. There should be a kneeler behind your seats. And if you're joining us from home, if you want to find a pillow or something comfortable to, to begin kneeling on, please do so now. In your booklets, you'll also see a post-it note next to the prayers. And there, we're going to give you time after each of these movements to write your own prayer of confession to the Lord. So let's begin. From Lamentations 2. I have cried until the tears no longer come. My heart is broken. My spirit is poured out in agony as I see the desperate plight of my people. Let your tears flow like a river day and night. Give yourselves no rest. Give your eyes no relief. Rise during the night and cry out. Pour out your hearts like water to the Lord. Now we're going to begin the prayer time. You can follow along in the booklet. The American dream, a nightmare. Mammon, our God. Our nation is splintered. Oppression is woven into our systems. Pride is the empire's native tongue, and of it we have become fluent speakers. Now if you can respond with me. Lord, have mercy on our nation and teach us to love justice. We confess to our lust that commodifies the human body and exploits other people of our self-indulgent appetites and our pursuit of comfort at the expense of others. We confess of our false judgments and prejudice toward our neighbors, reducing them to stereotypes and caricatures so far from the image of God. We have become numb to our injustice and cruelty as long as our own children remain safe. Like Cain, we say to the ground, weeping from our transgressions here and abroad, I am not my brother's keeper. Lord, have mercy on our nation and teach us to love justice. As a nation, we have been insatiable with our appetite for more, wrapping everything in plastic, forgetting it and letting it rot in the ocean. 
We have trashed this garden, this place you once called very good. We confess of our wastefulness and that we hoard and we gloat. We consume until there's nothing left, unconcerned about those who will come after us, being, being content with shipping our trash to other nations as long as our land is clean. Lord, have mercy on our nation and teach us to love justice. This land is yours. Unite us as one. Help us to see us as the nation you intended for us to be. Help us to count our world's welfare to be as important as our own. Amen. So now we're going to give you about four minutes to write your own prayer. And you can do so on the post-it note provided. If you're joining us online, you'll find the questions on the screen. And remember, there's no right or wrong way to do this. But here are some examples. I have been complicit to the sins of our nation through overconsumption and caring more about the things that I will buy to make me comfortable than the well-being of my neighbors. I have engaged in the sin of our nation by being unconcerned for the poor and the foreigner in our midst. One more minute. Now, if you're ready, if you can stand with us, we're going to sing the first stanza of the Kyrie Eliaison. Fuck. 
We will now confess our sins as the body of Christ. If you're able, I'd like to invite you to kneel for this section. Second Chronicles 7.14 says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We will enter into a time of confession and repentance. You can follow along on the paper if you're here. If you're at home, you can feel free to just close your eyes and to receive the prayer in your own personal way. We're going to have, again, three moments of uh, confession, a call and response. So I invite you to respond as a church in our confession. This is our confession, Lord. Holy God, as your people, your very church, we have forsaken others. We have belittled others and ourselves. We have cared more about what was on the outside, like polished tombs, religious but not godly. We make it difficult for people to know you. We have been critical of others and pointed out the specks in their eyes. We have been pious and righteous and burdensome. Lord, have mercy on us. Like lost sheep, we have erred and wandered. We have ignored your call, your mission, your heart. We have closed our eyes to your presence, closed our ears to your ways, placed you second in our hearts, removed you from the throne. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We have not forgiven others as you have forgiven us. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, have mercy on us. Like lost sheep, we have erred and wandered. As the people of God, we are to be the first to love, the first to serve, the first to speak out against injustice. And yet, often, we are the first to criticize, the first to judge, and the last to speak against the violence in the world. We have disbelieved your mercy, we have disregarded your words. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. Like lost sheep, we have erred and wandered. So we ask once again, Lord, for your forgiveness. We ask you to stay with us as we turn away from what is wrong and hurtful to what is bright and life-giving. We are your body. You are our God. Help us to return as a people you created us to be. Amen. For the next few min minutes, I'd like to ask you to write your own prayer of confession on behalf of the church. You'll see guiding questions on your card as well as on the screen. And many of you may feel uh, the need to, to confess to the fact that you've fallen asleep to God's calling in your life relying on your own riches or self-provision rather than God's provision, following the ways of our culture and the empire rather than the ways of Christ. Others of us may feel led to confess to gossip and slander within the body of Christ, our disregard for the poor, for the disenfranchised, for the lonely.
There's about one minute left to finish writing your confession. I can ask you to stand. We're going to respond as Christ's representatives, as Christ's followers, as members of the local body of Christ. We're going to take ownership over this confession and respond with Curie. Let's sing. For the idols be put on your throne. For the love we choose above our own. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us, we pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. you if you're able to kneel again in this third and final movement we will spend some time confessing our own sins Psalm 6 reads Lord do not rebuke me in your anger <laughs> or discipline me in your wrath my soul is in deep anguish how long, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. I am worn out from my groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. Now we will enter into our time of confession and repentance. Feel free to close your eyes as I read it aloud for us. Again, there will be three moments to respond in a call and response. So please respond accordingly as the church in our confession. This is my confession, Lord. I have wandered, been lustful and materialistic. I have not seen your image in the very people you love. I have not seen your image in me. I've been arrogant, thinking I've done all this myself. I have been so smug, so proud, believing that I am in control, that I am right. I've been unforgiving and spiteful, held grudges and made judgments. I stopped trusting God, believing the worst in you, and instead trusted in money, stability, or worldly comfort more than you. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for the sins done and left undone. I have judged and dismissed, been biased and prejudiced. I have hid from God, covered up my sins, pushed you away. I have self-medicated and numbed, became careless and distant. I have been ignorant and busy and self-absorbed. I have harbored hate and indifference. I have spoken out of anger and wrath, 
slandered and gossiped. I have consumed more than I need, more concerned with overstuffing myself than caring if there's enough for others. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for the sins done and left undone. I have ruined reputations and smeared intentions, burned friendships and bridges. I worry and am anxious and fearful and insecure, overly confident and arrogant, ungrateful and ungracious, worldly and broken and apathetic. Became greedy with possessions and envious of others. I have hoarded blessings and been stingy with what I have received. Turned away when I see the homeless knocking at my window. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for the sins done and left undone. You have made me in your image, Lord. Forgive me for the ways I have wandered from your design. You may now take the next few minutes to write on your own card your prayer of confession. There are guiding questions on your card and on the screen. Where it says, I have been complicit to sin, you may wish to write about the things that you have left undone. It may be growing numb to the things on God's heart, disengaging with life and loved ones around you, maybe allowing yourself to cope in unhealthy ways. Where it says, says, I have engaged in sins, you may confess the things that you have done, which may be sowing division at your workplace, remaining stubborn in your ways, remaining unforgiven, unforgiving, becoming greedy with material possessions. I encourage you to write honestly for the things you have left done and undone. you to present your ashes before God without shame and without fear knowing that his mercy anticipates you that his mercy is here and ready for you and there's no formula for confession no pressure to even form full sentences you may wish to spend the next minute in silence or in prayer simply asking the spirit to help you see yourself clearly and humbly there's about one minute left. Let's give in to God and give him our honest confession.
This concludes our third movement in confessing our personal sins. Tonight, we journey through three movements of confession. We confess, confess of our sins of what we have done and left undone in our nation, in our church, and in ourselves. I now invite you to participate in an embodied act of worship, of bringing your confessions before God and before the body of Christ. And we will do this by placing our confessions on this altar. As we, the body, see our confessions gather together here, we are reminded that God's mercy meets us when we confess and when we repent. We can present our sins before God and walk away knowing that Christ stayed on the altar and we are forgiven. So if you're at home, you may wish to place one or three of your posted confessions on a wall, a mirror, or somewhere that you can be reminded of his mercy in this Lent season. For those of you who are here in person, please bring your post-it confession when you come up later to receive your ashes. Um, we just simply ask that you um, can choose one of the three that you wrote, whichever you feel safe and led to do so. Uh, they will remain anonymous and simply placed here on this altar. So if you can take just the next few moments to Take time to consider which confession you would like to bring before God and before the body. We will now respond with the full Curie Eliaison. If you're able, please rise and let's sing.
wash all away. Let's forgiveness wash over us like a wave of grace. And forgiving God, forgiving us, and forgiving God, forgiving us. I'd like to ask you to remain standing. And, you know, actually, before we go any further, I'd, li- I'd actually like you to um, just where you are, open up your hands. You know, the temptation after nights like tonight is to feel distant from God, is to feel far from God, to feel ashamed or condemned. But the great invitation of our Lord is that if we confess our sins, that He will come and He will heal us. And so uh, before we go any further, I'd I'd actually like to just invite you to ask the Spirit to fall afresh on you tonight. That His presence would be a comfort to you tonight. That you could feel His nearness again tonight. So come Holy Spirit. The psalmist says this, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. I'd like to pray this over you. God, our loving and holy God, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that we return to you and away from our wickedness, you pardon and absolve all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe in the name of Christ. No powers, no height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Christ offers us the gift of peace, peace that the world cannot give. Christ calls us back into communion with him and with each other. May the peace he breathes on us become our gift for the world he loves. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Through his death and resurrection, our sins have been forgiven. The Holy Spirit restores us to communion with God and with one another. At this time, I'd like to invite the pastors to come to the altar for the administration of the ashes. And as Kathleen stated before, as you come up, bring a confession to uh, bring to the altar as you receive your ashes as a sign of repentance. For those watching at home, I'd like to actually invite you during this time, if you can find a candle wick or a marker or, or some kind of anything to really mark yourself. And if you're watching at home, if you're worshiping online with someone, ask them to administer it to you as we enter into this time. And so when you're ready, church, I invite you to come up. We'll have four stations here at the front, one of each beam of the altar. And when you're ready, uh, come up kneel and receive your ashes.
the table of gifts. Draw me near again, get me to the cross. To the cross. for our last song tonight. And once again I look upon the cross where you die. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. And once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Thank you for 
Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you that your spirit loves us enough to grow our awareness of your grace tonight, God. So Lord, as we enter into this season with this posture of openness before you, God, humbled before you, and utterly grateful for the cross, God, would you continue to remind us every day, not of our sin, but of your grace, God. So Lord, I just ask that your spirit would follow us, God, that we would be so aware of your presence in the season. Lord, help us to see you, hear you, experience you in ways that are so particular to us, God. We know you love us, Lord, so in faith, we receive your grace, God, and we leave our sins at your altar, knowing that your love and your grace is more than enough for us, God. We thank you in your beautiful son's name. We pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, church, for joining us as we confessed as a body. Now, some of you guys might need some prayer, so I would invite you. If you need prayer, just come kneel on this side of the altar. And the rest of you guys, if you want to come up and just look at all the prayers that your brothers and sisters wrote, I think that's really the beautiful thing about nights like this. Amen. That we get to just see the prayers of our brothers and sisters and know that we're not alone in this, in this journey of faith. And so if, if you'd like to leave, um, thank you for joining us online. Thank you for joining us in person. Um, and that concludes our night. Thank you.